So the tutorial that I posted um, had an exercise that you had to complete at the end um, to rename um, these vi uh, variables A1 through A7. Um, All right, so you had to create the new variable eye color that um, I showed in the, the how to create a new variable video tutorial. Insert a variable, remove the variable, rename variables A1 through A7 with information um, provided on the slide as well as clean variable A6 housing. Um, with that said, um, I want us to continue our practice by first looking at the living arrangement variable that was variable A7 that you were um, asked to name living arrangement. I want you to change that variable name to distance. Um, so go ahead and delete the variable, the name living arrangement and change that name to distance. Click enter and now you know that this is distance from campus. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want you to um, also just to run a frequency distribution on all of these variables. Do not um, select any descriptive statistics, but I want to make sure that none of these variables require cleaning. So variables A1 through to A7, to, um, so age, gender, school, year, transfer, frat, housing, and distance, right? Um, even though you have already cleaned housing and you know that it doesn't require cleaning, um, you can keep it in there or you can leave it out, whichever you prefer. Um, we've also run age already, so we know that age does not need cleaning. So tell you what, let us go ahead and remove those variables and let us run school year. We will also run transfer. We will also run Frat. And we will also run distance. Again, I'll just type it and find D1A. Look for distance among the Ds. And I use the center arrow to bring in distance. I don't need any statistics right now. So I'm going to click paste. And so now it is in my syntax editor. And I'm going to just go ahead and run that procedure. And I am able to see my output. So I'm looking now to make sure that none of my variables need cleaning. I see that the um, the school year variable doesn't need cleaning. We see the transfer variable doesn't need cleaning. We also see that the frat sorority variable doesn't need cleaning. And the distance from campus. Now, looking at this distance from campus, since it's off campus residence distance from campus, the truth is the people who are zero live on campus are not relevant and so we are actually able to um, clean this variable so that it's just um, reflected in miles of campus right so let's go ahead and clean the off campus um, the distance variable so as we said we have eyeballed we realized that um, variable zero can be declared as missing. 
we are going to go to our data. We are going to go to distance. We are going to go to missing values and we're going to select discrete missing values. We're going to select zero, click OK. Um, that has been done, but just to make sure, we will go back to our syntax file. We will select the procedure again and we will run it again just to make sure that um, in this new one we have just one less than a mile off campus, one to two miles, two to five miles. Um, and more than five miles are there, all right? So we see that. So now that we have all our variables nice and clean, what I'd like for you to do, what for us to do is to um, select um, of the variables age frat and school year i would like for us to look at those variables and make sure that we have correctly selected our levels of measurement because we are going to run appropriate statistics on those variables. So for example, the school year is ordinal, the housing is nominal, frat nominal, transferred nominal, This is ordinal, gender, nominal, age, etc. Okay. So, um, bearing in mind that we said that for nominal variables, we can only perform counting functions on them. For ordinal variables, we can do countering fun counting functions plus ordering functions. And then for um, scale, which are interval and ratio var variables, there is no limit to the procedures that we can run. So I would like for us to select measures of central tendency appropriate for the level of measurement. And the measures of central tendency that I'm particularly interested in are mean, median, mode, standard deviation, maximum, minimum. Right? So you have to be able to select the appropriate procedures, all right? So let us begin with age. And age, we would say, is what type of variable? Age is a scale variable. So let us go ahead and um, reset to clear all the variables out. And I'm going to select the age variable. And these are the, the, the default um, statistics that are generated. Uh, but I need also mode and median. So currently, the software has already pre-selected for me um, the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, and the maximum. I have added my mode and my median. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that. Go to my syntax. And I'm going to actually select that procedure, which is the frequency distribution for the age. And I'm going to run that selection. So the new frequency distribution is now at the bottom, um, the latest one that has been generated. And as we can see, we have it here. Um, and these are the um, descriptive statistics. Now, 
as I said before, because this is um, a ratio measure, there is no limitation on the, 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 the statistics that you can run on this measure. And so all of these would be appropriate, right? Mean, which is the average, mode, most frequently occurring, standard deviation, which would measures the variation in responses, um, if we had more age groups, then the standard deviation would be higher. Um, the minimum, lowest age, maximum, highest age, and the median, which is the midpoint of the distribution, are noted here. However, if we were to go um, to, for example, FRAT, right? And one way to examine the FRAT variable from your data file is to go to utilities variables and I'm looking for frat so let's go find frat and trying to make this bigger so you can see so here you can see straight off the bat that based on these yes no responses this would be a nominal variable right so seeing as we know that this is a nominal variable i am going to go ahead and generate the frequency distribution for it so analyze descriptive frequencies and i'm going to reset again i'm going to find frat I'm going to select that, bring it in. I'm also going to deselect all of these other um, procedures because guess what? We can only perform counting functions. The software already will generate the N and the percentages for us, so we don't have to tell it to do that. However, the one statistic that would, statistic that would be appropriate here would be mode. So we go ahead and select mode. We'll go ahead and click paste. We will go to our syntax file and we will run the frequency distribution for FRAT. And immediately we see the table here and we're able to say, for example, if we're interpreting this variable, that um, 86.5 68% of the respondents were not fraternity or sorority members. Only 13.3% were sorority or fraternity members. We also then can say that the mode, and if we were inter to interpret this major central tendency, we would say that most of the um, respondents were not fraternity or sorority members. Bear in mind that I didn't say the mode is zero. That's not my interpretation of the mode. My interpretation is that most respondents were not fraternity or sorority members. Um, similarly, if I were to interpret the output for age, it would be the average age of respondents was 20 years old. Most respondents were 19 years old. Um, with a, given the standard deviation of 1.23, there was not a high level of variation in the ages of the respondents. Um, and this means that all the respondents' ages were fairly close to each other. The lowest age was 18, the highest age was 22, and the median age was 20, indicating that um, 20 or 20 years old was the midpoint of the distribution. Okay, let us take a look at this school year variable. So analyze descriptive frequencies. As a matter of fact, let's look at it in utilities first. So S, school year. And you will see here the different levels, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, fifth year. So you can tell that this is an ordinal variable. You have known this already because you should have um, properly specified the level of measurement. But if you hadn't, 
you should be able to look at the responses and tell that this is ordinal. So I am going to now go ahead and run my frequency distribution to analyze descriptive frequencies. I am going to deselect mode instead of resetting because I don't want everything to check again. I'm going to return frat and I'm going to select school year. And I just clicked in the variable list and type the letter S. Bring it back in. I want mode still because um, this is ordinal, so it's one step above nominal. So whatever you can do at nominal, you can do at ordinal. But then we have the other measure of central tendency, which is appropriate for the ordinal level of measurement, which is median. So I have selected median. I'm going to go ahead and click paste. Then I will go back to my syntax. Keep on doing that but the newest um one is going to be on top so which is a difference with spss because in spss it would have actually put the newest syntax at the bottom so go ahead and select with your cursor and run your selection now on the output file the newest output is going to be at the bottom and as you can see here we have freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and we see where uh, roughly 28%, if I'm rounding up, were freshmen, 25%, um, if I'm rounding down, were sophomore, 26% were junior, and 21% were senior, right? Um, we see here that 79% of the respondents were either junior or lower and we see therefore that 21 percent were senior year right or if we were to say what percent were junior or higher it would be 100 minus 53.35 um which would be 47 or 46.65 round that up to 47 so we would say 47 percent were junior or higher here we see that um, 85, 8,590 respondents answered the question. Um, 16 persons did not. Um, the most frequently recurring response we had was one. And in, in interpreting it, we'd say most of our respondents were freshmen, which corresponds with the highest frequency and highest valid percent. We also see that the midpoint of the distribution is at the sophomore level. Um, and as you can see, the cumulative percentage crosses over into 50 or above 50. And so this is how you know that that is the midpoint of the distribution. Um, you will be given an exercise to practice um, because it is essential to know what procedures to run for what level of measurement. That is extremely important, guys. Very, very important.